Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be answering some of your most popular skincare questions, and I'm super excited that this video is sponsored by and in partnership with Olay. Skincare can be really confusing and overwhelming, so we're gonna be talking about ingredients like retinols, vitamin Cs, acids, along with what order to apply products in, what should and shouldn't you mix, and ironically, I'm covering a lot of topics today, so this whole video may seem overwhelming, <laughs> but take from this what applies to you, make small changes, changes over time and I'll have timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to a particular ingredient or topic if you're like eager to get ahead but let's go ahead and get started. I would say the most popular question that I got from you and that I get from friends and family is what order to apply products because a lot of us will run out buy a bunch of stuff and then you get home and it's on your vanity and you're like what do I do with this? And of course it's gonna vary product to product, check your instructions on the back, but in general, I like to do from lightest to heaviest in terms of texture. So firstly, you're gonna to wanna to start with a clean base, so you'll use a cleanser. At night, I would use a makeup remover, then a cleanser because I like to have clean skin. Then I'm gonna move into something like a toner or an essence then a serum, then a moisturizer, and then depending day or night, I would follow up with an SPF or my oil, depending on if it's day or night. So in general, you wanna go from lightest to heaviest. Once you've figured out the order to apply your products in, the next most asked question is, how long do you wait in between layers? And for me, it really honestly depends on how much time I have. So I have some serums and moisturizers that are very light, take very little time to absorb into the skin so I can move it along quite quickly. It also may depend on how much time I have. So sometimes I mix my serum into my moisturizer or my moisturizer into my oil because you've gotta be realistic. Uh, some things that I do, sometimes I'll brush my teeth in between a layer I'll apply my eye cream in between a layer because for me eye creams I haven't totally determined when's the best time so sometimes I'll do it like after my serum or after my moisturizer while I'm waiting for my next layer uh, or I'll put my hair up for bed but something to keep in mind if you are doing things in between layers is make sure your hands are clean because you might have hair product and then you don't want to get that on your face uh, and during the daytime, I would say the most important layer to wait for is your SPF. You want to make sure that your skincare has sunk in. You can always give your face like a light touch and then apply your SPF for the day. And at night, I try to do my skincare not right before bed because if I'm using an oil especially, I don't want oily face on the pillow, you know, so give it enough time, um, but use your best judgment, be realistic, you know, we're not gonna wait five minutes in between layers, at least I know I'm not, but a light touch to the face uh, will generally give you a good idea if you feel like it's, if it's in there. Then I was asked about a more simple skincare routine, kind of what are the basics, whether you want to have a skincare routine that's just quick and you don't want a bunch of layers and a bunch of waiting in between, or you're on a budget. So for me, I would start with four things, which I, I believe to be minimal, uh, a makeup remover, if you are a makeup wearer, then you're gonna want a good cleanser to clean your actual skin, a moisturizer to hydrate your skin because everybody needs to hydrate their skin no matter the skin type, and an SPF for the day because everybody needs to protect themselves from the sun even though it feels like the sun is never around you do need to protect your skin from the sun so those would be my four basics for sure whether you want something simple or you're on a budget then of course speaking of budgets we're talking about drugstore skincare versus high-end skincare and I think you know my answer to this question if you've watched any of my YouTube videos or any of my content but absolutely drugstore can be and is just as good as high-end sometimes with high-end you're paying for quality sometimes it could actually be very high quality ingredients sometimes you're paying for the brand name sometimes you're paying for the packaging sometimes you're paying for the marketing strategy it's like anything clothing food makeup if you've watched any of my my kind of best of skincare videos or my routines they always include both drugstore and high-end not because I'm purposely purposefully trying to include both of them but because I think that they are absolutely comparable and there's great options out there from both. And something also to keep in mind is sometimes the drugstore brands have been around a lot longer than the actual, than like the new shiny high-end ones and they may have better research and better kind of a grasp on, on skincare and also sometimes they're owned by the same parent company. So like it's kind of the same thing anyways. So absolutely there's great budget and drugstore items out there for sure. An ingredient that I probably got the most questions about was retinol. What is retinol? And retinol is actually a form of vitamin A and it can help to increase cell turnover in your skin. So it's gonna kind of encourage your cells to turn over faster than they already would have, which can lead to smoother, brighter skin, uh, a reduction of things like helping with damage from the sun or acne 
scars, a reduction in fine lines and wrinkles, and it can also help to stimulate the production of collagen, which unfortunately is harder to come by as we age. Kind of like an out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, kind of thing. I kept saying in with the old, out with the new, and it was getting me confused. I had to say that a couple times. Um, but also, I think it's uh, there's kind of a misconception about retinol that you're supposed to introduce it when you have mature skin, but I definitely use it as something that is more preventative, uh, starting in like your, your mid-20s, I think. It all is gonna depend on your skin type and what you're looking for, but I mean, who doesn't want smoother, brighter skin and a reduction in acne scars and to have preventative measures? So I definitely think, uh, depending on your skin needs, it's absolutely something you can introduce in your, in your early 20s. 20s, mid to early 20s. So then the follow-up is how do you fit retinol into your routine and then how do you know when a retinol reaction is too bad? And this is where the Olay partnership comes into play and I can also kind of refer back to the is drugstore effective question. Isn't it nice when it all fits together? It's not like I purposefully answer the questions in this order. <laughs> but I would like to introduce you to the Olay Retinol 24 line. I'm personally so excited to be a part of this launch. Olay is a brand that I remember seeing in my household as a child and currently, you know, in the present you've heard me talk about the whips line and their eye creams and it's just super super exciting for me but what's exciting for you and for me is to have a great option that is readily available and also affordable so I've actually been testing this out behind the scenes and I am super impressed I am blown away and I'm really glad I had some time to actually test it out so I could give you some real insight but firstly I've definitely noticed my skin looks smoother it looks brighter I've noticed an improvement in things like texture and tone of my skin I am working on some texture on my chin that I've had forever along with a little texture on my forehead and unfortunately but maybe fortunately right before I started testing this out I did have a lot of acne so I'm really excited to continue using this to work on the remaining acne scars that I do have on my skin which I'm not gonna say that I'm happy that I had acne but at the very least <laughs> I have something now that will help me tackle the scars and to talk more about how does this fit into my routine I think this is a super cool kind of feature of this line is you choose so there is a nighttime moisturizer which I mentioned then there's also the serum along with an eye cream and they all do the same thing for your skin just kind of in different applications so I've been testing these out for going on two months now and I have a bunch of nighttime serums that I love so I've been reaching for the night moisturizer but if you have a night cream that you love uh, you can absolutely reach for the serum to use and although they are recommended for night and I spoke to the Olay team about this directly and kind of asked them and they said that the retinol is Technically, like you can use it during the day. It is recommended for night use, but it's because retinol as an ingredient has photosensitivity to the sun, so it degrades in the sun. So of course you should be wearing your SPF either way, whether you're using a retinol or not, but that is why it's recommended for nighttime use. Probably the number one thing stopping people from trying retinol is the, the sensitivity. People are afraid of having a sensitivity to it or a reaction to it. And if you Google retinol, it is nightmare fuel of peeling skin redness like crazy sensitivity and even if on the other side of that you end up having amazing skin that to me feels unnecessary it looks painful and with any retinol you want to read the label follow the instructions of course um, but unless it's recommended by a derm and you know that these reactions are supposed to happen how do you know that your skin is going to look good on the other side of it and that you're not damaging your skin in the process because I don't want that like I don't have time to have like a bunch of red peeling skin in the hopes of hopefully having like good skin on the other end of it so the Olay retinol 24 line is actually formulated without fragrance dyes or sulfates which are all known irritants to the skin but a great bonus is that it's actually formulated with niacinamide or vitamin B3 which is known to hydrate the skin help the skin actually hold on to moisture so you can actually use this every day without irritating your skin unlike some other retinols but either way no matter what you're trying be sure to test it out every couple of days see how your skin reacts uh, but also look for options that have things in there that are going to help reduce irritation things like the niacinamide which is such a good ingredient so finally when it comes to mixing retinols into your routine
protein. I know some people can see retinol as being like disruptive and like everything has to change when you introduce retinol into your routine. That has not been my experience with this line. It's gonna depend, of course, person to person, line to line, uh, depending on your skin type. I've used vitamin Cs, AHAs, BHAs, and had no problems. Uh, but of course you can do a spot test. You can use one in the morning, one in the night, but this retinol 24 line is meant to be used every day and to cause no irritation. But of course you need to be um, mindful of your own skin type and what your skin needs so you can always just kind of like you know test it out do it slowly and see what works for you then the next question was kind of mixing ingredients in general like what can you mix what can't you mix again a personal preference thing and it depends on the line but for me in general my best advice would be to uh, have it be one active ingredient per session because active ingredients acids it's all so popular right now and we can tend to potentially overdo it and I think the most imp the, my best piece of advice would be to just you know if you're using something like a salicylic acid which is also known as a BHA I would just stick to that one salicylic acid per skincare session if that makes sense uh, things like acids I like to just use one at a time if you don't have a super sensitive skin type again you can kind of test things out it's going to depend person to person but you don't want to overdo it the one ingredient that I feel like probably people get hung up on is hyaluronic acid, which I don't consider an acid. I don't know if that's a bad thing to say, but I kind of consider that more like a hydrator. I don't find that to be an ingredient that reacts poorly with anything that I mix it with. And it's something that I recommend everybody use. So I wouldn't be scared of a hyaluronic, not, not that you should be scared of any ingredient, but I wouldn't be hesitant to incorporate a hyaluronic acid into basically any part of my routine, but I would be more mindful when incorporating something like a BHA and AHA glycolic acid um, salicylic salicylic acid, things like that. That is what you want to be more mindful of. Then this next question is something that I've definitely asked myself before and is, is eye cream necessary? Now the skin around your eyes is much thinner and potentially more sensitive than the rest of the skin on your face. The same way the skin on my body is different than what's on my face. It's different than what's on my lips. So for uh, eye, eye creams are formulated to be potentially more gentle around the eyes. They are formulated to be eye safe. But if you don't have any skin concerns around your eyes and you feel like you know things are looking good then you know you can save yourself a few dollars there but if you do feel like you have darkness or fine lines or you are looking to treat something there specifically I personally would use an eye cream there over something else something actually that I thought was interesting about the um, Olay retinol 24 eye cream is it for me it's formulated to actually stay put around the eyes, which I had never heard of that. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. So it's definitely, you know, like anything up to you, not 100% necessary, of course, but if you are gonna use something around your eyes, I think it would be best to use an eye cream. So this next question is something I'm very passionate about and that is the best ingredients for oily skin. And I am on a crusade for everybody with oily skin to hydrate it. I spent years stripping my skin with a lot of ingredients from the kitchen, things that probably shouldn't have been on my face, but something that's so important is to hydrate oily skin. So, you know, I talked about hyaluronic acid a million times. It holds a thousand times its weight in water, but feels really light. I like to apply that on damp skin. Earlier, I was talking about niacinamide, which is great to reduce inflammation in the skin, great for pores, uh, but it is also a really, really good hydrator, which I love. Then you have kind of the classic ingredients, things like kale and clay, BHAs or salicylic acid are great for oils and oily skin pores, but I think we all kind of know about those ingredients for oily skin, so that's why I really focus on hydrating the skin if you're not already doing it. At nighttime, think about in introducing a little bit of a heavier night cream so that uh, you're really getting that hydration, even in oil. I know it seems really, really backwards, but you don't want your skin to, uh, because oily skin can be dehydrated. That's what I should have prefaced this with. So your skin can be dehydrated hydrated it can panic and overproduce oil because it doesn't have enough hydration so hydrating your skin can actually help to balance it so those are my favorite hydrators and then of course the other products are, are really good for also helping to balance the skin and keep oils at bay um, but it's about you know finding that balance let me say it for the third time 
So the next ingredient I got lots of questions about was vitamin C. What's it good for? How do I incorporate it into my routine? So vitamin C is something that's actually found in your in your body and in your skin. But of course, as we begin to age, we produce a little bit less of it and things like environmental aggressors can affect it as well. So the same way you would take or you know consume antioxidants for your body, things like a topical vitamin C can help you fight off those aggressors, helps with um, any kind of darkness, age spots, just overall kind of tone and brightness of your skin and I think it's something that anybody can use uh, no matter your skin type or level of sensitivity and it can really help with the uh, kind of dark spots on your skin and attack those without changing the overall uh, pigmentation of your skin which I think was interesting I found during my research but as for where do you incorporate it into your routine uh, unlike a retinol vitamin C is actually best used during the day and then you can choose you know a serum or a moisturizer whatever it is that kind of fits best for you for me personally I tend to like vitamin C serums. I don't know why, but that, that's generally what I tend to go for when I'm looking for something with vitamin C. Then of course, a hot topic ingredient is AHAs and BHAs. An AHA, for example, can be a glycolic acid. These work more topically on the skin. They work on the surface level, which is not a bad thing because that helps with the texture of your skin, the smoothness. Something like a salicylic acid, which is a BHA, gets in there a little bit deeper and helps with things like uh, in your sebum or oil glands, your pores so that's why you see so many people using salicylic acid for uh, oilier skin types and I love both of these ingredients they can be intense so that is something to keep in mind especially with the percentage levels some glycolic acids and, and BHAs AHA blends can be up between you know 20 30 percent depending on the product those I would definitely recommend for a more advanced user it's going to depend again if you have sensitive skin but I've seen great improvements in texture in oil production from introducing these ingredients ingredients into my routine so I definitely recommend them but like anything just be mindful of what you're introducing and, and start with something a little bit on the on the lower scale when it comes to the percentage. Onto face masks, how often should you do them? For me, it kind of depends. Sometimes I reach for them when I want to just kind of be like, you know, have like a self-care moment. <laughs> and sometimes I reach for them when I feel like I want to treat something. So it's really going to depend on the mask, on your skin's needs. I kind of play it by ear. When it's around that time of the month, I'll reach for masks that have charcoal and kale and clay to help with any kind of uh, breakouts that I might have. If I'm seeing a lot of texture, I might reach for a gly mask with glycolic acid in it because these are treatments. They're gonna be a little bit more intense than a product you would use every single day. And then during the winter, I also find myself reaching for like overnight hydrating masks to give myself a little bit of a boost. Um, but yeah, I would say I use a mask maybe two, three times a week. Really depends on how busy I am, how much time I have, and the, the condition of my skin. But yeah, I would say probably two or three times a week is what I do. Then my final question was, how often do you change up your skincare and do you change it per season? Admittedly, I definitely switch up my skincare probably more than I should due to the nature of what I do, but I do try to, I do stick to, I do try to stick to um, the one active ingredient per session for the most part, and I try to keep it in the general same area. So for example, if I'm, I like to use in the daytime a vitamin C serum and then a hydrating serum, so I may use the same grouping of the two of them for a couple days, then switch to the next one. Not ideal, but for me, I see skincare as well as not only something that can help improve my skin, but me time, I'm a product junkie, I like to switch things up, so I have to be realistic. Of course it is best to stick with something straight, but if you are gonna switch it up, just try to be careful, try to only swap out one product at a time if you're doing it in your routine, because that way you can also see if the product that you are now no longer using was affecting your skin, if the new product is affecting your skin, because if you swap out all of your products, then you can't tell what's really working for you or what's not working for you, if that makes sense. So kind of use your judgment, but I try to do like one swap out of a product at a time. And then when it comes to seasons, I do switch it up. So especially if I'm wearing makeup during the summer, I'm gonna go for lighter hydrating products, moisturizers, etc. And then in the winter time, I do like to bump up my hydration, especially since I moved to Toronto, I find myself using heavier night creams and oils, uh, especially during the winter time at night to give myself that little bit of a boost because it is dry here. 
So I'm gonna stop here. I've covered a lot. Let me know if you enjoyed this. I personally really enjoy chatting about skincare. It's something I've become really, really into over the past like two or three years. And if you would like to check out the Olay Retinol 24 line for yourself, it is available wherever Olay is sold, which is basically everywhere. I'm gonna continue testing out the line so that I can show you my progress. Of course, I have been documenting that behind the scenes. And if you'd like to learn more about the Retinol 24 line, it's of course uh, all available in my links down below and on olay.ca. But thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!